Welcome back to the Daily Bread Bible Study. We are looking at day 135 for Thursday, May 14th, 2020, focusing on 2 Chronicles 29 through 31. So here in chapter 29, we focus on King Hezekiah of Judah. He inherits the throne and seeks to end the wayward practices of his ancestors. Starting in verse 6, it says, For our ancestors have been unfaithful and have done what is evil in the sight of the Lord our God. They have forsaken him and have turned away their faces from dwelling of, from the dwelling of the Lord and turned their backs. They also shut the doors of the vestibule and put out the lamps and have not offered incense or made burnt offerings in the holy place to the God of Israel. Thus, Hezekiah seeks the Lord. He notably repairs the house of the Lord, encourages the Levites to sanctify themselves, also sanctifies the temple, and then restores proper worship to the Lord in the temple. King Hezekiah consults uh, the directions of King David around worship and Levitical structure. He established protocols and has a festive worship service full of music and offerings. Um, a grand observance and including a grand observance of the Passover there in 2 Chronicles 30. Thus he invites the people of Judah to observe the Passover on the second month of the year. This is the first grand effort to observe the Passover in the time of the kings. You know, they've had uh, Solomon also has done some grand observances, but uh, this Passover um, is an interesting thing. So I have some conflicting you know, statement there from uh, Second Kings. Uh, with King Josiah in verse 23, it says, No such Passover had been kept since the days of the judges who judged Israel, or during all the days of the kings of Israel or the kings of Judah. And so future King Josiah is kind of saying that this Passover is different. So why would it be that King Hezekiah's Passover is different? Well, first, the timing of the Passover is different than the Lord instructs in Exodus 12, 2 through 3. It says, It shall be the first of the month of the year for you, and tell the whole congregation that on the tenth of the month they are to take the lamb for each family. So Second Chronicles explains uh, that the Passover ritual is adapted into the second month and explains why in Second Chronicles 30, verse 3. It says, They could not keep it at its proper time, because the priests had not sanctified themselves in sufficient number, nor had the people assembled in Jerusalem. So that explains why Josiah you know, says that this Passover is not by the book. So uh, previously I thought that there was no Passover uh, in, observed in 2 Kings because it doesn't mention Hezekiah's Passover, but... Second Chronicles gives us information otherwise. So, anyways, with that aside mentioned, King Hezekiah invites all of Judah and the recently dispossessed Israelites to the festival. In verse 9 of chapter 30, it says, The king's words also include an invitation uh, for Israel to reject their the idolatry of Baal. In verse 9, it says, for as you return to the Lord, your kindred and your children will find compassion with their captors and return to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you if you return to him. The recently defeated Israelites, you know, um, Assyria came in and sacked them. They mostly just scoff at King Hezekiah of Judah. It says in verse 10 of chapter 30 of 2 Chronicles, They laughed him to scorn and mocked him. Only a few from Asher, Manasseh, and Zebulon humbled themselves and came to, to Jerusalem. I should also note a metaphor for Jesus can be found here. You know, Jesus is referenced there in the Gospel of John, especially as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. 
And this metaphor is emphasized, pointing out the unclean, un unsanctified individuals are also forgiven by God through this lamb, the Passover lamb. Here in 2 Chronicles 30, it says, Therefore the Levites had to slaughter the Passover lamb for everyone who was not clean, to make it holy to the Lord. And the Lord heard Hezekiah and healed the people. So all of this is done is that the lamb sanctifies the people, even people who are not clean or not um, you know, already sanctified. And so I think that fits very well with what the Gospel of John is trying to say as Jesus is the Lamb of God, the one who sanctifies and restores our right relationship with God, even if we are, quote-unquote, um, unclean. Uh, the effect of all of this, this Passover observance by King Hezekiah, is shown in verse 26. There was great joy in Jerusalem, for since the time of Solomon, son of King of David of Israel, there had been nothing like this in Jerusalem. Moving on to 2 Chronicles 31. With joy for the Lord in their hearts, the people tear down the altars to foreign gods. King Hezekiah also reinstates the Levites uh, and the priest to quote-unquote what I call full-time status. Um, and calls the people to bring the tithes to free these dedicated temple workers from having to, you know, make ends meet for themselves or find food for themselves or do outside work. They have all of that given as kind of the structures of the past and that Moses had established, you know, that all of this is provided for by the people. And so thus that allows them to focus on keeping the uh, laws of of God. So the offerings are brought and a great quantity even is left over. Thus Hezekiah builds storehouses for the goods and the descendants of the tribe of Levi are then enrolled and given structure to their enrollment. Thus a summary of King Hezekiah's leadership can be given um, or leadership to this point I should say is given. In 2 Chronicles 31 20 it says Hezekiah did this throughout all Judah, and he did what was good and right and faithful before the Lord God. And every work that he undertook in the service of the house of the Lord, and in accordance with the law and the commandments, to seek his God, he did with all of his heart, and he prospered. So that theme again, that when we follow God and listen to God's words for our life, when we revere God, that God will bless us. So that may, may that be true for you, and may you find that um, experience of God to be pleasing.